everybody. This is the Acquire Podcast from the Odd Phonic Podcast Network, and I'm Jenny Wright. This is the podcast that delves deep into the world of list building and online events. It's designed to empower entrepreneurs and marketers with the knowledge and strategies to master these essential growth tactics. And before we dive in, I have to give a caveat. I live with neighbors. I'm in a building, and one of the units next to mine is being renovated so if you do hear noises in the background i do apologize this is the life of recording a podcast in your home so onwards from that i am really excited because today i have the absolute privilege of hosting a brilliant business strategist here on the podcast today the mastermind behind biz bestie hq biz boost hq and the six figure content club lynn neville is here i'm really really excited Lynn is a dedicated specialist in lead generation, networking, and online events. She guides businesses towards achieving remarkable growth with simple yet highly effective tools and strategies. With Lynn's guidance, you can bid farewell to the struggle bus and say hello to a thriving list filled with devoted followers eager to engage with all of your products and your services. Lynn is joining us to share about her expertise about two really compelling topics today, two that are very close to my heart, list building and also collaborations. We're talking about giveaways. Uh, That's a very intriguing world, by the way, of giveaways and bundles. Talked about this before and how they work to both grow your list, create a ton of content uh, and a lot of collaboration. So before we jump into that, make sure you remember to subscribe review or share this podcast. It's the best way to stay ahead of this ever evolving and changing world in list building, lead generation, launches and sales. And after all that, Lynn, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Wow, what an intro. (laughs) I gotta live up to that. (laughs) I love doing a fun intro. I think if you're gonna come and spend the time sharing with me and everybody who can listen to this, what it, everything that, you know, we're gonna talk about today, I should take the time to make sure you're done right. And also, you and, I have, you and I have had a couple conversations. So everybody knows that you and I are in the same field, okay? I said it in the intro, you're in list building, you're in lead generation. But the great thing between you and I is a complete lack of competitiveness. And we had that conversation early on um, because we've been in the same, you know, we were, we were seeing each other on the same summits. We were seeing each other in the same bundles. We were seeing each other on the same posts on Facebook and so on and so forth. And we finally got on a call and I was like, you intimidate the crap out of me. And I think you said, (laughs) I'm intimidated by you. And I'm like, okay, cool. So let's just not be intimidated and let's not compete. And um, we've done that ever since. And I think that's a great way to start. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I absolutely love it. Just your personality, like it's so easy to to just be friendly with you and collaborate with you. And we like every conversation we've had, we've been a hundred percent, one hundred and fifty percent honest and sharing private things that mm-hmm. I feel comfortable being able to do that with you. And those are the kinds of people that you want to have inside of your life, inside of your business. So thank you for entering my world. <laughs> <laughs> Same. And yeah, I mean, before we hit record on today's episode, we were having quite the conversation and a lot of giggles. Uh, we're, you know, I, just some some stuff about what's going on at this stage of life, um, which could be a totally different podcast in itself, but it really plays into the fun of being a digital marketer when you are a woman um, of a certain age. So we were talking about that and <laughs> that might bleed into the conversation, we shall see, but I'm really excited to talk about collaborations and giveaways and bundles for a lot of different reasons. Now, we already know collaborations, giveaways and bundles are meant as lead gen activities, right? And they're a fantastic way to grow your audience. Can you share some success stories or examples from your own giveaways, your own bundles, and where collaborations have made such a significant impact in building that sort of business growth? Yeah, okay. So um, it wasn't, I mean, I I, I wanna say way back when, but it wasn't really even that (laughs) way back when. But um, when I when I first started finding out about giveaways, I was participate. I was watching other people first of mm-hmm. all, and then I decided to sign up as a contributor and I participated. In it. And I got you know um, I think a hundred leads maybe from my first one. And then I was like, I can do this. This is easy enough. I'm going to do my own. So I did that. And I think my first one that I hosted, I got seven hundred leads, something like that. Mm-hmm. All within the space of, and I I did it on the fly, but all within the space of a week, I got that many leads and it just changed my world. It was like, 
why am I going to post on social media all the time? Try to get eyes on my blog, the slow game that's only going to drip leads to me or even paying like Facebook ads. Like I don't, you know, when you're first starting out, really, you don't have the budget for that. And so giveaways were like, oh God, I, I can get so many new leads, like hot leads, like really good leads, people that are definitely interested in what I have to offer just by running these kinds of events. And so that's how it started. And then it just snowballed every, with every event, the number of leads gets grows, the quality of the leads grows. And um, after hosting so many bundles and giveaways, like I, I just, it, I feel so good about getting those leads for other people too. Um, Absolutely. So it's not just about me. It's not, it's, it's also about the people who are contributing and helping them to grow their businesses too. How many have you done so far? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that part of the uh, the issue, the earlier the earlier problem we were talking about? No, um, <laughs> memory loss, memory and brain memory fog loss. is a thing. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Losing uh, your train of thought. <laughs> losing your train of thought. All these good things. Um, so we'll do our best to stay on track. So I, I know you participated in as a contributor to dozens mm -hmm. um, of giveaways, bundles, summits, um, mm -hmm. I kind of lump them in to the same list building event kind of thing. Um, and then hosted um, probably a dozen or so of mm -hmm. my own. Um, so yeah, those are the numbers. In yeah. total, how many leads have you brought into your business specifically or directly from these types of events? Yep. So um, it depends. I, I, wa I want to make this clear. So some of my events, I really want to help other people out. So I don't require um, a list size. So I do have people who have no, nobody on their list. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have people who have 30,000 people on their list, but I make it clear that these specific events are open to everyone. And then I have some other events where you do have to have a minimum number of leads. And so those events, I do get more leads. Um, I've cleaned my list several times and, um, I've grown it to 10,000 people mm -hmm. on my list. So just thinking about the numbers, that like That's a great going number. from when I first did my first giveaway, I had less than a thousand people on my list. Amazing. And so just through those, those events, participating in other people's events and also hosting my own, I've, I've gone to over 10,000 people. And what kind of time period are we looking at? A couple of years. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. That's organic. Yeah. And if you were to try and pay for that through Facebook ads with the prices for, you know, like lead, like the cost per lead, you're saving a ton of dough doing that. And I've been on several of your bundles <clears throat> and they're super well organized, first of all, uh, like hyper organized. I love that. You you have an amazing attention for detail, which I think a lot of people could could benefit from. And uh, for sure. And I know that um, you know, sometimes you've had some people who have tried to emulate what you do. Uh, not as successfully as you, but they definitely try. And your bundles are great. One of the bundles I was on for for you, and I was a contributor, I ended up with well over 150 new leads and they were very dialed in because your, your bundles, and this is a secret to bundles and giveaways, don't generalize, make them specific, right? So you, they're very specific, very dialed in, very niche in leads, which I think is really, really important. So it's not just a, you know, giveaway about, anything there's really like a specific topic that you're talking about giveaways and bundles are very intriguing topics to me i i love these concepts can you explain why these methods work so effectively for list building and engaging potential potential customers over other types of lead gen yeah um like i like i was talking about earlier you can um go on the social media and create all these posts and hope to get other people to join your, your, um, to follow you. And then you have to take the effort, make the effort to get them to actually come onto your list. So it's a slow game. It's a lot of effort, or you can pay for those leads. Um, that's a lot of money faster, but it still, you know, ends up being quite a cost. Um, or you can just hope that all of your friends sign up for your list and that they tell their friends, <laughs> like, it's just so ineffective. And so it you is. always, give you that big boost in your subscriber list in a short period of time. And they really are, as you do more and more of them, you, and as you participate in more of them, they become easier. 
Um, so it's not like there's a lot of ramp up time to be able to run your own, like, you know, like with summits is really not that much ramp up time. You can, anybody can do it. Um, so I lost my train of thought. There you go. You there you go. So let's talk. Okay. I'll bring you back. Um, actually you were talking about ramp up time, which I thought was really mm -hmm. cool. What's the ramp up time to like the planning period time to actually build a really good giveaway or a bundle? Yeah, so um, I would say for like a summit, four to six months. So it would be similar for the giveaway, but it's actually the giveaways and bundles are a little easier than summits. I hate to say this, sorry. No, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's good. I know. I know they it's are easier. easier to start off with because you don't have to organize all of the participants in in, in like scheduling their, their talks, doing the recordings, um, getting all that information. Really, when you're running a giveaway and bundle, all you need is their bio, their headshot, the links to their social media that you want the, uh, they want to share and mm -hmm. then their con contributions. So whatever their product or offer is that they want to include. So learning and actually the time required is a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. So for giveaways, I say a minimum, if you're first starting out, go for the, give yourself four months. It's just, you know, you want to make sure that this is a representation of you. So if you have a crappy giveaway or bundle, <laughs> you're not going to build that authority that you want that giveaways actually give you in a quick uh, sense. So you want to give yourself three to four months. I actually organize mine in two months or less typically. And what was the, what, the last two I had were 200 and something contributors. Yes. In, huge. Yeah. In two months time. I don't recommend you start off doing that. <laughs> No, um, no, because we talked during that and you were like, I'm not stressed. I'm not stressed at all. Like, you know, pulling the hair. Um, 200 contributors is a lot. It's it's a, mm -hmm. it's a ton. What do you think the psychological, like what what is the psychology behind us loving, wanting to get these like gifts from people, signing up and then wanting to receive like 200? I mean, does somebody actually need 200, right? Uh, like, gifts from people, but what is the psychology do you think behind these, the popularity of bundles? Yeah, it's so most bundles, when I first started doing this, giveaways were giveaways, things were free, you didn't have to pay for the bundle for the giveaway. And so bundles have been evolving in, in my in my space, I've been seeing them evolve where they are um, paid now. Um, and then I've also, I've done the hybrid where you have one level, which is free and then another level, which is paid for. And so, um, the whole concept behind the giveaway was it's the free thing. You know, you can get all these things for free. You can get a taste of what it's like to work with someone for free. You get a taste of what this person's, um, offers and products are. So when you contribute to the bundle, I I've been, I've been following you. I've been looking at your stuff, but I don't want to take that step to actually make the purchase yet. But if I can get one of your products, your offers or, or services for free, then I get to taste and see what it's like. And if I love it, I'm going to be buying more from you. You know, it, 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 that barrier of entry is just, it's taken away. Like I don't have the fear of, okay, I'm going to waste my money signing up for something that I don't know what she's really like. So giveaways, whether it's the free, completely free, or you're paying like a hundred dollars for 50, 50 products and services, that's just a huge discount. It's like that, you know, it's a Prime Day, Amazon Prime Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to get everything I can. I never really don't need that. it, you're going to buy it anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I have a bunch of charging cords that I don't need because they was on some, like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't need these, but apparently I have them. I have a question around the results for you personally. Like, so you've hosted a dozen of these things monetarily and like customer sort of focused like a results focused ROI. Have you made money with these? How have you, you know, has it increased your revenue? Like what has it done for you in an ROI sort of perspective? Yeah. So, um, and only share what you feel comfortable sharing of your, <laughs> yeah. Um, giveaways and bundles. You can ask the contributors to, you can invite contributors to participate for free. So you're not paying them anything. You're not asking them to pay you anything. But when I first started out, the whole giveaway world was you actually, in order to be a contributor, in order to participate, you had to pay a fee. I they know. started off at like 97 to 297. And so they've been evolving. But anyway, so um, that is one way to make an income. So one of my, I think my first business day, um giveaway, the fee was $50 
to, to contribute. But remember, I had 200 and something people on that one. So that was a pretty good chunk of change. Yeah. And I offered um, upper levels. So I think the upper tier started off at 250 maybe. And the demand just got higher. So I ended up having like the cost of that upper level ended up being like, I think it was 300. And then there was a bump offer where you could have one-on-one time with me and I would help you with your offer. And so that brought it up to, I think it was like $500 for the whole kit and caboodle. So that was a really good chunk of change. So that's the front end. If you decide to charge a fee for, um, for your contributors to participate. And also if you do sponsorships, that's a whole nother, like you can charge them a thousand dollars. I love <laughs> yeah. sponsorships. It's one of my favorite things right now. Mm-hmm. And it's really not that much effort. Um, and then the, on the other side where uh, once you get people on your list, they're more likely to buy from you. So if you are, what I recommend everyone do is not just put a gift inside, not put, just put a product or an offer inside of a bundle and not do anything with your new, new newfound leads, right? So say you get 100 people and you don't do anything other than send them what they signed up for. What I recommend everyone does is have a funnel set up. And I'm, I'm like, well, your audience knows what a funnel is, but if you don't, yeah. then have something on the back end to offer them. Otherwise, it's kind of a wasted lead. They're just going to forget about you. So if you have a product or service um, that is like the first level of something that you offer, then groom them, you know, nurture them, and then eventually make the offer on the back end and you can grow your income that way. So it's pretty lucrative, not just in list growth, but also in, you know, the, the money that you can make through running these events. Absolutely. And I love, there's, there's a lot to be done within them, right? So <laughs> they have evolved and we're not seeing, now we're seeing the contributors not actually paying a lot of money in some instances. It depends on how people run it, just like summits. They're so different. And now we're seeing the bundles where um, it's free to be a contributor, but there is usually an up-leveled package that you can, you know, as a contributor, you can pay for, and this gets you what potentially more access or what does it usually give you? Yeah. So they they vary. Um, so in the old days, it used to be, you know, it was 197 just to participate. And then mm-hmm. the, there were like three tiers and the third tier got you front page, first placement. And that's how it's evolved now too, where um, you, you can buy a sponsorship and you'll be in every single email your logo will be on every single page um, of the website um, mm-hmm. down to just that next tier where you pay a little bit extra so that like what, like I said, if I had 200 people, 200, 200 contributors, that's a long list. Mm-hmm. So imagine you're number 200, you're going to be on page number 10 Easily. where not, people might not actually have the, the energy to keep going through to 200. So you pay a little extra and you'll show up on first on the first page or the second page. Mm-hmm. And um, those, those that's how like, it's, you know, one of the, the ways it's evolved lately. I like that. It's, hmm. and I think, you have to, it depends on the, the event. So if you, like we were talking about some, some people like try to do the giveaway thing and it's a little disorganized and you have to, when you start participating, in other people's events, you have to know how good this person is. Are they actually going to be? And that's my job as an, an event host, you know, as a summit host, you know, this, my job is to highlight the people that are contributing, yeah. highlight their, what their offers are and highlight, you know, make them look really good and present them to the people who are, who are, um, to all of our audience, our combined audiences. And so if you have someone who's not really good at doing that, I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> and you know, someone, it's not going to, to work out that great for you. Absolutely. And don't worry about the train of thought thing. There, we're, we're stream of consciousness right now. <clears throat> we're making total allowances for the brain fog and, and everything today. So it's not a big deal. These things continue to evolve. And that's one of the things I love about um, summits. I'm actually, I've actually started doing hybrid summits and bundles. Mm-hmm. This is fun. So you're creating a ton of pre-recorded interviews, but you're also doing some of the um, the bundle side where you're having contributors, and then you're doing some live panels and stuff. When it came to the bundles that you've been doing, have you found that uh, infusing live uh, anything has worked? Like I remember in yours, you had networking, you had mm-hmm. other things. What has been working, and what do you think people should do? Because if it is just a plain bundle. And you have contributors and everybody signs up 
I, my worry is that people will forget to participate. So what do you do? Um, so I actually pulled this from the summit side of, of, of list building events where I threw in the networking piece. That's That was never anything inside of the giveaways and bundles that I kind of grew up seeing. Um, so I love that part in the in, in the summit world where you get people together and they network. I love the co-working sessions. I loved, you know, what you do inside of summits to extend that experience to give you more value. I pulled that into the bundle world. And it's so funny. I started seeing everybody doing it too. But those live events make that connection. And like I was saying about um, being able to grab other people's products and services in a giveaway gives you a taste of what it's like to work with that person, gives you a taste of what their offers are and the value that they'll bring to you. Think about that, like, you know, when you're having a networking event, you actually get to see and meet these people face to face. You get to hear what they're actually like. You get to ask them questions. And that just adds even more value and starts to build that really, that no like and trust even deeper and even faster. So I think it really does make a difference to have those live events. Um, more so than having those, um, uh, what's it called? The um, X's and O's. <laughs> bingo. <laughs> the bingo boards, yes. Yeah, those so, were popular for just like maybe a hot minute and then they disappeared. Well, people still do them, but I don't, I see that I see more value in having live events or even events that people can uh, watch the recording for mm -hmm. than, okay, um, comment on this post and you get a square on the bingo board. Like that's superficial to me. Whereas when you're getting an event with someone, you're able to ask them questions, you're able to hear what they actually, how they communicate. Is their style going to be compatible with what I'm looking for in my business and the way that I like to work? Are, are we going to be a good mesh? That just makes a world of difference. And one of the things I love is when contributors get together and start to talk about this. And we had talked about this before, like collaboration, it's all about collaboration. One of the things I love is getting the, the contributors together so that they can learn more about each other and then they can go off and, and do some kind of collaboration on their own, but they may not have met that person if it wasn't for the event that I hosted. Absolutely. I love, I love the, even in summits with speakers, but especially in giveaways with collaborators is getting together and creating community. I think, that are actually, I'm really opinionated on this piece of collaboration and collab and moving forward and trying to like support each other versus having uh, the competition. I, <laughs> my last summit, I had somebody on my summit as a speaker and we are also in a similar world to each other. And this person decided that they were more in the competitive spirit than I was. So they came on my summit and participated and everything like that. Uh, and after the summit wrote a whole piece about how the style of summits that I create are terrible. Wow. And I, and that they prefer a different style of list building uh, and that their style is better, more preferable, easier, faster, fun, or whatever. And that my style of building summits was arcane, like old fashioned. Mm. And I was like, oh, but you didn't mind being on it. And yeah. you didn't mind, you know, benefiting from it. Yeah. So I thought that was, um, I think I was really disappointed. I was very disappointed yeah. in that. And um, unfortunately, I learned my lesson and, uh, and just know that there are people out there who are really into the competitiveness of what we're doing. I think that's a shame. I think we can create a lot of good networking and opportunities and masterminding all that stuff together. Yeah. Veering and, a little and bit. that's one of the things that we uh, that that comes up that people you know ask me um, when you how do you find the people first of all to be inside of your your <laughs> events and um, are there things that you need to think about when you're looking for those people and one of the things is what is like what what are they competition for you or are they um, uh, what's the word I can't remember the word. But are they, are, is the space that they're in going to work well with you? Like, so mm -hmm. do they ser serve the same target audience, but have a different offer or have an offer that works well with what you're, what you offer? Yeah. You want to, you, I mean, it is business. You do want to try to stay away from exact competition because really, like, you don't know what they're going to do afterwards. Um, and, and there are people that apply and like, why are you applying? You are doing exactly what I'm doing, or you're doing something that 
that like yeah contradicts what I'm trying to, to do so it's something to be aware of that you don't have to say yes to everybody no that you really need to do a little bit of research and find out because like I said earlier these people are representing you and so if they are in co- any way conflicting with the values that you're trying to present through your event then you probably don't want them. you don't need to say yes to everybody did you ever feel that way about me no well you're in a different world yeah. So fair enough. Um, I was just curious. I know yeah. that was really not on like my my idea of questions, but you brought it up, and I'm like, I'm wondering if I, I'm jo- I'm total. I'm so sorry. I'm totally calling you out. But no, I wondered. I know we're we're so. I would say that we are topic or niche adjacent, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? So we have the same ideal clients on both of our lists. However, my people want you know. I talk about mostly summits. You talk about um, you know giveaways and collaborations and stuff like that. Yeah, no, if people ask me about summits, I'm not the expert. I will direct them to you. Same. And I'm, I'm, and it's not like, why, you know, when you're in a, a business, spreading yourself too thin can actually backfire. So if I were to be the bundle giveaway expert and then try to be the summit expert, I'm really thinning myself out. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of similarities, but at the same time, that's like more effort. So I'm not going to claim to be the summit expert. I'm going to send people your way. Um, that's, I mean, yeah. true collaboration there. Absolutely. Okay. Slightly off topic question. Not actually, it's not off topic. What has not, what have you tried and what has not worked in giveaways, bundles and collaborations? What has just like bitten you in the butt? Yeah. Um, before I do that, I, I want to say something that has worked. And I remember the last event that the last summit I was in with you, you, we're talking about how you're doing experiences mm-hmm. inside of your um, your events. And that I thought was so, so good. Such a game changer, if I'm going to quote AI, such a game changer. <laughs> um, and I thought it was so brilliant. And I realized I was kind of doing a similar thing. I just didn't name them that, that you know, the, the word experience, which I thought was brilliant in doing co-working sessions where you weren't just um, teaching, training and co-working sessions. And that's something that we do. We've switched into doing more inside of this best DHQ, my membership community, where when we have the guest expert training, they do maybe a half hour training and the rest of it is co-working where people can ask questions. And so you, like I said, with that live event, you get more value out of that. Everyone's brain dead after an hour of training. And so having to listen to an hour of training and not really being able to ask the questions that are popping up as you're as you're listening to that training, you're much better off giving that space for people to actually start asking the questions. And then you can highlight, you can actually see, show off, you can show off your expertise even more um, by doing that. So experiences, you're the bomb. You, that was a brilliant idea of yours. <laughs> Things that I found <laughs> that haven't worked. So the first time I ran, uh, I think it was a Biz Bestie bundle. Um, I did the, um, this is the price of the bundle and I did, oh, the early bird. So early bird pricing, you start off at a discount. So say the bundle is a hundred dollars early bird pricing. The first, uh, if you buy within a, a week before it goes live, it's $67. And then it just, the price goes up as you get into, um, the actual start date. So that worked really well. Um, I didn't do that the second round. And I was like, why aren't people signing up as much as with the first one or paying for the paid bundle? Um, because I didn't do that discounted early yeah. bird thing. It's just another mental thing, <laughs> you know, like the whole early bird, I'm going to get a discount. So I'm going to sign up for this before the clock and with the clock showing with the clock uh, running down, it gets people to start buying more. Um, so that is something I, I recommend if you are going to do a, a, a paid bundle and add in the early bird pricing because that worked. Um, things that didn't, what are the things that didn't work? Um, overscheduling. That's one thing. Yeah. Um, too <laughs> many events. And I've had people say this to me. I, I want to please everyone. So I schedule all sorts of events. But I've had people say to me, there's too many. I can't make all of them. You're not supposed to go to all of them. <laughs> you can rewatch all of them if you want, but it makes too many choices can actually backfire on you. So I fully agree with that. that. I don't know. What else would have been a failure? What else did you see me fail at? <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't. That's the thing. I, and I'm, I'm really like, I scrutinize and it's not like a, a mean scrutiny. It's a, I'm, I'm just 
observant and I watch, right? And so I didn't see a lot happening, but I know what it's like behind the scenes, like things mm-hmm. happen behind the scenes that nobody sees. Yeah. And, you know, it's always that like duck on water, it looks really calm on the surface and underneath it's a freaking chaos. And that's what summits are half the time. But I know I didn't see anything happening. That's why, I mean, this is kind of a selfish question. I really sort of wanted to know <laughs> <laughs> like what happened, but and it, and it didn't, and that's totally fine. So oh, there was that one thing. So what's that? Ma- things that could backfire. Remember when the site went down? Yes. <gasps> that was horrific. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's nothing you can de- technically do about that. I mean, that's happened a multitude of times. Literally, I have a client at this particular moment that we're recording this, that their summit go li- goes live tomorrow. And about uh, three weeks ago when we started promotion, their Facebook account got hacked. <sighs> the day we started promo their facebook account got hacked i mean the timing is ridiculous and it took him over a week to get it back and the only reason he got it back is because when he worked in corporate he actually knew people who worked at high levels at facebook and google and so on because that was one of his jobs so he was like on the phone with his friends at facebook going hey i i need you to bump me to the front of the line (laughs) i like i need you to i need you to get my my account reinstated and so on and so forth and they actually got it done i know for other people it doesn't happen that quickly so that was that's you know that's definitely happened but sites go down Mm -hmm. um i had somebody one of my clients decided to uh what was the, what's the right word? It's not navigate. It's, um, she moved her site from Squarespace to WordPress, but it didn't, but we didn't know that this was all happening oh. at the same time. Now we built it on WordPress, knowing that her site would eventually come off of Squarespace and, and go on to WordPress, but we didn't know it would happen at the exact time that we were doing the summit. And so when they moved the other site over into the same environment, we had our summit built into, it took down all of the pictures oh. and it messed up every single font. So we went, I mean, it looked like a, a site from the early nineties. It was just basically text. It was crazy. And that lasted for about 48 hours while we tried to get that fixed. And uh, we did, but man, like these things, these things do happen. Yeah. So anyways. just having, you know, things would fail, like not having yeah. a backup plan, not, you know, in case this happens, but, you know, yeah. making sure that you have a, a backup plan, then you prevent those things from failing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as we wrap up, and unfortunately, my the construction <laughs> in my neighbor's condo continues to get louder. Uh, and we wrap this up. How can people find out more about what it is that you do or inquire about bundles and giveaways and all those wonderful things? Yeah. So um, did I give you a gift to give away to people? You absolutely did. did. We actually have your 30 ways to grow and scale your business through collaborations. And so the link to that will actually be in our show notes for this podcast. Yeah. And that talks about, um, you know, just 30 different ways. So one of them being summits, one of them being giveaways and bundles, but there are other ways to collaborate. If you want to get your feet wet and try a smaller collaboration first, just like um, Instagram, that was actually my early, early giveaway days where you can run those Instagram giveaways. You partner with one or two other people and you pool a gift together and then you run a giveaway on Instagram. You get people to sign up and then one person wins. And so that's like a mini version of the giveaway. So that 30 ways to grow and scale your business through collaborations gives you, gives you some of those ideas and being able to reach out to people, which is one of the key pieces that you need in order to run your own event. Absolutely. And if you've never run an event before, I love giveaways and bundles. I also love summits for this, but I think it's a really great way to sort of break in. And I spoke to a bunch of women about a week and a half ago in an in-person event. And I even said to them, if you're freaked out by hosting your own bundle, your own giveaway, or your own summit, then get on somebody else's platform Mm -hmm. and be part of there so you can start growing the leads and getting used to these types of events. And you'll feel a lot more comfortable running one of your own. To that... Lynn, it is so awesome, as always, to be able to connect with you and have you on the podcast. Thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. And um, I'm excited that everybody's going to be able to find out more about you. The link, again, is in our show notes. So thanks so much for doing this. Thank you again for having me. This was a blast. (laughs) Absolutely. We always have a good time. And if you are listening to this podcast and you want to hear more, make sure that you are subscribing and liking the podcast so that you never miss an episode. Go check us out in our show notes and also on oddphonic.com, which is where everything is for this podcast. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you all soon. Take care.